All right. Well, it looks like it's about that time. So welcome, everybody, to this week's Inspiration Wednesday webinar, Seamless, Seamless Asset Management with Vast and Lectora Online. Thank you all so much for joining us today. I see some familiar names as well as some new ones, so I appreciate everybody joining us. Um, my name is Laura Silver. I'm VP of Products for Trivantis, and I'm really thrilled uh, to show you Trivantis Fast today, and as well as how it integrates with Lectora Online. A couple housekeeping items first. Um, everybody on the call is muted, but we certainly encourage any questions or comments that you might have. So please feel free to use the chat panel that you see as well as the questions panel. And I have my colleagues, David Porter and Charlie Vani on the line, our uh, digital asset management and vast experts extraordinaire, and they'll be able to help answer any questions that you may have throughout the presentation. Um, and then if there's time at the end, we'll have saved some time for any additional questions that don't go ahead and get answered and make sure that they do. As well, this webinar, as always, is being recorded, and we'll get it up on our Trivantis community site within the shared content just as soon as the webinar is over. So you can always go back and access the recording there or share it with your friends and colleagues. And um, I think that should be it. Um, so today I'm going to introduce you to VAST, a digital asset management system, and we'll talk about all the different ways that you can use VAST within your training and development, as well as other departments uh, where you might be siloed within your organization, and show you the seamless integration with Lectora Online, so how, to, how the whole content development uh, lifecycle really comes together. And we'll take a deep dive uh, into the ways that you can use VAST to manage all of your assets and a lot of the challenges and obstacles that you can overcome. Um, before I get started, I just wanted to ask a couple questions. So you should be able to see the ability to raise your hand. And the first question I had uh, was how many of you actually currently use an asset management system? If you could uh, raise your hand and, and show me with your hand if you currently use an asset management system. Okay. See some hands going up. Thank you. And how many of you currently use Lectora Online uh, or Lectora Inspire? If you could raise your hand for that. Okay, great. Great. Thanks so much. And that just gives me a sense of, of my audience and, and how much detail I might need to get into for, for either product. So let's start, I uh, just want to give you a brief background on VAST. Uh, essentially, VAST is a centralized online hub where you're going to go to create, to manage, share, track, and find all of your digital assets. Everything from your graphics, your photography, your images, your animations, as well as things like video and audio. So this really applies to e-learning assets like fonts and templates, images, graphics, things like buttons and icons and callouts video clips, sound effects, animations, really any kind of item that you're going to be reusing in your e-learning courses. And the goal here, as always, is to help you save time and build better, more effective e-learning courses. And that's all that VAST is about, is helping you do that. So VAST, at its core, is really a tool for collaboration, for sharing, for efficiency, security, and compliance. And it also addresses the issue of centralizing and distributing digital assets in all formats. So this concept of centralization is really key as we work towards efficiency, breaking down silos to bet between departments, and that goes between different e-learning teams within your organization. So we found that you might have an e-learning team that's focused on support or an e-learning team that's focused on um, customer service. And neither team really knows what the other one is doing. And therefore, they're not necessarily taking advantage of assets or knowledge or information uh, that the other team has. And that just creates you know, uh, redundancy, inefficiencies, and inconsistent courses across your organization. And it also goes for silos between departments outside of just training and development. So whether that's your sales organization uh, that's creating client-facing materials or customer service, support, and is certainly uh, marketing, which is generally one of the biggest use cases for using a digital asset management system. So we want to really help you to break down those silos. 
And I'd imagine as you're building your e-learning courses, a lot of the things that we hear, a lot of issues that you might be experiencing that VAST can satisfy, uh, come along with working on a team with multiple e-learning developers, for example. So certainly, if you're using Lectora online, then I'd imagine you have a, a distributed or at least multiple e-learning authors working together and trying to collaborate. And so having a centralized hub for all of your assets where everyone is pulling from the same place and using the same assets is really key there. This is also going to apply to you if you source the design and development of your assets, whether it's graphics or audio or video, outside of your e-learning team. So uh, if you are working with contractors or people who are from other departments who need to contribute assets that you then use in your e-learning development, uh, that creates a problem because then you end up with dispersed assets without a single central location. Certainly we know the need for consistent templated uh, branding and look and feel across all of your courses. So as we're building courses, and especially when we think about localization and translation, responsive course design, so you've got your mobile versions and your tablet and your desktop, consistency becomes a great challenge. Um, and so that's another part of what VAST is here to address. One of, I think, the key use cases is where when you require ongoing updates to your assets across courses over time. So this means that um, typically if you, you know, have a logo that gets changed out uh, or you find an error in an image or a new model is released and you need to update those assets uh, within a course, rather than having to do that manually over dozens or maybe even hundreds of courses, not only within your authoring environment, but as well uh, where those courses are being distributed and hosted to your, your end users, to your learners, um, that, that can take a ton of time. So when you have that situation, being able to update your asset in one place and knowing it's going to propagate everywhere that it might be used in your e-learning course is just a massive, massive time saver. So I'm extremely excited about that aspect of VAST. Then there's the idea that if you require approvals or permissions for assets to be used or modified, um, so you might have little or even no organization around that, no workflow or process in place, and so anyone is being able to use or modify those assets. And instead, what VAST will allow you to do is, is put in place uh, a workflow, uh, whether it comes to downloading specific assets or contributing to the system, uploading assets and publishing them, uh, VAST will be able to create those approvals and build them into the process. And then finally, the ability to track the use of assets and consumption across wherever they might be used in, in the end state. So in this example, courses or marketing materials, sales support materials, whatever that might be. So not being able to track who's doing what to which files and when can certainly create a problem. And so these are just some of the pain points, some of the needs and challenges uh, that, that we're really excited about VAST being able to solve for you. So it's all about saving you time, saving you money, making assets easier to find, which in turn makes them more likely to be reused. And then, of course, easier to share with team members, breaking down those silos. So the first thing that I want to show you is how this works with Lectora Online. I'm going to go over to Lectora Online now, and I just have, you know, a really basic course up. Up here, cargo securement, uh, typical use of images, audio, narration, videos, animations, logos that you can see here, uh, navigation, things that I want to be standard across my course and likely within your organization you want to be standard across all of your courses. So what I'm able to do is rather than bringing in an image, an image from my desktop, uh, which maybe has had no oversight or maybe an image I've grabbed from a, a stock library that isn't necessarily approved um, or something I've made up in clip art because I'm feeling really inspired that that uh, legal or marketing would you know, have a field day with. What I'm able to do is go to my tools ribbon. And if I have VAST enabled on my system um, or within my organization, it will then be enabled within your Lectora Online organization as well. And we're able to use the same credentials from Lectora Online to log you into VAST. And I just want to point out here as well that you now have this nice bright green tools tab here over on the right side of the Lector Online Publisher interface, just to really make sure you remember that these tools are available to you. So I can also uh, select VAST from here as well. 
and it's automatically logging me in because I've already logged into my system. So I have a unique URL that's specific to my organization. And you'll see here that I have this folder structure. So I just want to point out, and we'll talk about this in a lot more detail uh, when we're looking at the full application. But the folders I see here are completely custom in a number of ways. First, it's custom to your, your system, your organization, how you want to set up and organize and store all of your assets. Maybe it's by file type, maybe it's by course type, uh, maybe it's by geography, whatever that might be. And then me as a user, when I log into VAST, the folders that I see and have access to and the assets within them that I see and have access to are based upon my permissions within VAST. So if you're working with a contractor within Lectora Online, someone you've brought into your team temporarily, they're not necessarily going to see what you might be able to see. So everybody's experience is completely customized and it's based on how you set up those permissions even down to the logos, or sorry, the icons that we're showing here, those are customizable as well. So let's take a look. I'm gonna go into my stock, stock photography folder, and I'm just going to add my congrats background image. And in this case, I'm just going to click download. And all it's going to do is just add it to my course. And so now the image is added just as any image would be added to my course, and I have access to the same image properties, the ability to style it, size it, however I need. And I can do the same here on my Sorry page. I can come in and find my Sorry background image, and I can download it. So just as if I were importing an image from any other resource library uh, or from my computer, that's now a copy of the image that's specific to this Lector Online course. So if I were to go and change the image within VAST, it would not change it within my course. And so maybe in the case of these background images, that's just fine, that's not a problem. But let's say we want to add the logo, and I happen to know that marketing is working on a rebranding effort, and the logo is likely to change within the next few months. So I'll go into my Logos folder, and rather than selecting Download, I'm going to select Link. And so what does this mean? First of all, I'm going to see in my Title Explorer that the icon looks a little bit different. I have that little link icon to indicate to me that this is not a, a separate instance uh, or copy of the image. It's a linked image. And I see that same icon right here within my image properties. I can even click on it to see specifically what that link is. As you can see, it's not guessable. Uh, it's completely random, so no one's going to be able to find it. But what does that mean for you? So let's say uh, six months down the line, one month down the line, the logo changes. What I'm going to be able to do is log into VAST, uh, whoever the administrator is, whoever has access or rights or permissions over that logo asset, and I can change it out. And what will happen is it will automatically change it in all the courses and all the places where it's being used in my Lector Online titles where I've added it as a linked asset. So imagine the amount of time that it's going to save you and the consistency that you'll achieve across all of your courses. And as you can see, it's extremely easy to use, uh, very straightforward. And, and in terms of being a Lector Online user, there's, there's nothing really new that you have to learn. Um, however the folders are structured is going to be whatever makes sense, as I mentioned, for your organization. So you'll be able to, uh, to navigate through them in a way that, that's most intuitive to you and find what you need and add it to your course. And really, that's all there is to it in terms of the Lectora Online integration. So what you saw there when I opened up that vast panel was really kind of a, a, a separate type of view um, a connected view into the VAST application. So let's look at the full application now, and so you can see really, um, you know, all the all the features and functionality that come with a, a typical asset management system. So let me click over here and take just a sip of tea. So as I mentioned before, I'm just going to kind of keep re-emphasizing this point that what you see here is completely customizable. And what's really powerful about VAST is that it's, it's, you have the ability to bend the platform to the way that you think about your assets because every organization and every team within that organization deals with them differently.
So this applies not only for admins and main stakeholders, but also your end users as well. So when you're thinking about this, think about who's going to be the typical administrator of your asset management system, who are going to be the typical end users who are either contributing to the system or who are accessing and downloading assets from the system, and know that you can really tailor and customize their experience based on the kind of user that they are. So when we're logging in here, I'm looking at this custom landing page, um, but everything I see is specific to my permissions and that governs my experience on the site. So whether it's based on the domain that you came from or the fact that I've been assigned uh, to a group, that's what my experience is going to be. So this custom page here um, just showcases the functional areas of this particular demo site. But it can look however you want uh, from your organization's perspective, how you want to brand it and show what uh, the template should look, about, look like. And it can reference different areas of the site that you want your users to focus on based on the kind of role that they have. So you can really force them through different pathways, uh, provide shortcuts and make it really, really easy and intuitive. It doesn't have to look like this at all. This is just an example. And you can have as many custom pages as you want. So we have the concept of uh, divisions here. And so you can be an internal user or you can be an external user. So you can think again of uh, customers or contractors or agencies, and they're all going to see a different landing page and a different view. What's nice is that you can use this to really bring your brand or your course guidelines to life. So rather than having them in a PDF folder that someone has to go to and find online, this is going to actually reflect the kind of courses and the kind of materials uh, that you anticipate your end users to create. And if we look up here at the navigation, this is customizable as well. So depending on the kind of user that logs in, they're going to see different items. And these can be renamed as well according to your naming convention. So this might be resource library or creative library, um, brand guidelines, or maybe you want to call, call this course guidelines. It's really up to you what you want to name things and how you want to present them to your users based on the user kind of user that they are. So let's dig in a little bit further. Let's go into the creative library or resource library. This is your area to house all of your assets. And as we saw when we were looking at BAS through Lectora Online, you can create any number of different folders that you like. And you can use different icons to visually represent them. So again, think about how you organize your assets, whether it's for course development or whether you're trying to work with your assets across different organizations or different departments within your organization. And this is how you're going to end up setting up your folder structure. So you have vertical navigation over here, um, very similar to your title explorer within Lectora Online or your file explorer. But you also have access to filters. And this is really where VAS becomes extremely powerful and intuitive by taking advantage of filters. And so this is how you're going to allow end users who are maybe a little bit less tech savvy to find exactly what you need. And so again, kind of bringing this back to the point here, you know, filters and search why is this so important? The idea is that you're trying to cut down on the amount of time it takes to find what you need. And then again, the concept that you're probably going to then have to go and build it yourself and or, or create new duplicate redundant content if you can't find it. So by being able to use things like uh, predictive search, instant search, and filters, you're just cutting down on that time it takes to get your course to market. So you can see here that these filter options show up when I select uh, this filter icon over here. So over here on the left, you can see a number of different types of filters that are available to you. And as you probably guessed it, they're also customizable. So Whatever you see here, however you think of your, of your organization of assets, whether it's image type, if you need to think about uh, resource types, geographies, if you have credit restrictions on different asset usage restrictions um, based on when they were, they were created or last updated, whatever that might be, you're able to create custom filters uh, with any types of values pre-populated that you want. So this is also, again, to, to better match your workflow and match your organization's needs. And these are instantaneous. instantaneous. So as I select a specific filter, uh, it's going to begin to limit my results over here on the right. And the same goes for search. So when you are using the search field, you can search by an asset's title, description, content, 
keywords, metadata, and unique ID of all of the assets. You also have access to an advanced search as well. Uh, Vast provides predictive search and it remembers keywords and partial search words and it automatically shows you those results as you start typing in and helps to remember them so you don't have to always uh, think of the, the search that you thought of yesterday when you were trying to find that very particular asset. So because of the technology used around searching and filtering and managing assets, this makes Vast the fastest and most scalable SaaS digital asset management system in the market and available. And again, it just goes back to saving you significant amounts of time. So that's what robust and instantaneous search can do for you. So let's go back and look at these folders because you have a lot of flexibility, as I mentioned, when it comes to folders. So things like being able to create nested or subfolders. And then I mentioned the concept of permissions. So who you want to access that folder directly, you have the ability to control. You can also assign workflows, which we'll talk about, uh, which are specific to the way that you kind of uh, publish, download, or request feedback on an asset or folders that contain those assets. You have the ability to email a link, so you can share with people who are not registered users the collection of assets. Um, you have the ability to set a review date, allow for comments, and force watermarks on all of the assets within a folder. You can see that you can bulk upload, so you certainly don't need to upload one asset at a time. There's a desktop app that you can download and drag and drop multiple assets at the same time into your system. And so a lot of functionality and flexibility when it comes to the different folders within the system. So then let's look at a particular asset and you'll see some of the information that comes along with, with an asset because it's not just about you know, finding and using them. Uh, you really need to have all of that information to make that available to you. So you can view extremely detailed information on each file, including that metadata that comes with the file, everything that you might need to see here, as well as keywords. So these can automatically get uploaded uh, as part of the file itself. And then you can also give ability to publishers who are contributing assets to select from preset keywords or enter their own. So this is how you really create a taxonomy for all of your content and all of your assets, create organization and consistency and make it much easier to find and organize and manage all of them. You also have access to usage. So you can see who has access to those files and how often. You can download images in different file types. So not just the original file type that you uploaded in, but you can convert it. So in this example, we have a JPEG, but I have the ability to download it in a ping or a GIF. Choose my compression type or my image dimensions. I can also create presets. So if I knew I wanted to end up sharing this to a social media platform, for example, I can create a specific compression file type and dimensions. If I knew that I wanted to go, this to go to a mobile course, or this was really just going to be for desktop, what's going to be the best compression and dimensions for that? It's really nice to be able to go ahead and create those presets. You also have access to things like version control so that you can make sure that only the newest version of an asset is displayed and image annotation so that as you are going through versions and collaborating between your colleagues, um, getting feedback, you know, you might need something to change within an image or you're reviewing a specific video and you're worried about the narration or you have copy that needs to change, whatever that might be, the idea of those annotations and different versions allow you to make sure that you have really the latest and greatest on the system at any given time. So let's go into the admin side now, and I just want to point out just a couple of things uh, that we talked about earlier, things like permissions and workflows and how that works, as well as filters. So this is where you set up your site, and what's really nice is it's completely self-service. So from creating the background image to the colors, the logos that you want to use, the fave icon, all of that's done through a template, uh, so you don't even need to involve IT in that part if you don't want to. Um, it's really easy to change this at any given time, uh, so that's no problem at all. So you can see some of the things that you can start to create 
and start to determine how you want your site to work is all done through these admin settings. So something that I'll show you here, for example, is the concept of a review date. So if you know you've uploaded an asset and it has uh, a lifespan, after which it's going to either expire or it needs to be updated, you can choose to enable those review dates and get alerts when an asset reaches that review date and then choose what you want that action to be. Do you want to move it to maybe a pending or needs review folder? Do you want to delete the file? Um, and that goes back to another point. So those folders don't just have to be used for asset type or category. They can also be used to indicate maybe the, the life cycle of the asset. Is it in development? Is it going through approval? Is it live? Does it need review? That's another way to think of your folders as well. When you're uploading an asset, you can choose to enable auto tagging and choose how strict you want that tagging to be. So it's going to create those, uh, those keywords for you and tag them automatically. You have the idea of approvals. So you can say that you want to approve a download request and we'll talk about that a little bit as well. So these are just some of the things that you can do kind of just through the admin interface. And then I mentioned divisions as well. So this is important because this controls uh, the initial experience and the landing page of a user when they log in. And we know often when we're working in a learning team that you're not just working internally. You have to deal with external users as well. Maybe that's your customers. Maybe that's uh, contractors, um, outside agencies, whatever that might be. So you can create your internal and your external divisions and that will change their experience on the site. But then further through that is the concept of groups. And so this is where you set those permissions. So you're going to define the level of access that people have to the site. In terms of adding users, there's a number of ways to do this. You can import them from Excel, you can manually create them individually, and you can certainly configure single sign-on via Active Directory integration or via SAML. You can manage individuals if you want and set permissions directly on them, but we would really recommend that you assign them to different groups to define their experience. So these can be role-based, maybe based on geography, based on department, for example. So if we go into some of these groups, for example, preview would mean that I wouldn't be able to download or publish uh, any of the assets. And I can come here and see the different types of permissions that I can either enable or disable for this particular group. So a number of different modules within the site that I can choose to either turn on or turn off. And then within this resources area, if I select details, you can see all of those different folders. So I can come in and turn on preview, access, publish, and admin permissions on a folder by folder basis, as well as even a subfolder basis. So I can really start to fine tune how I want all of my users to work within the system, what I want them to be able to do, just consume assets, just publish assets, not be able to see other things that don't relate to their particular course or their particular project. And then we talked about filters when I was showing you the resource library. I just want to bring that up again because that is such a key part of being able to use the system uh, really intuitively and, and, and make it make sense for you and especially for your end users. So this is how you guide the users go through the system. Um, and, and it's nice because it just really makes it as simple as possible. So we talked about um, how you create them yourself, and this is where you go to do them as an admin. You enter in what that filter is going to be, if it's a required uh, value, if you can allow them to multi-select, and what those values are going to be as part of the system. You can also set up alerts. So if you want to know when something is added, updated if someone is commenting on an asset and with what frequency you want to be alerted. And then you have the concept of workflows and approval. So this is how you really streamline all these creative projects. Um, whether it's something that you need your artwork, your photography, or your imagery to be approved by relevant stakeholders before they get distributed, whether you have files with talent usage rights associated with them, so you want to make sure you have download requests captured uh, and, and put into place before a file is used, that's going to take place through, through workflows, and especially because an audit trail takes place, alerts take place, so you really make sure everybody's in compliance and everybody's on the same page. With these approvals, you have the ability to make them hierarchical or really just within a single stage, and there's three types of approvals. 
The concept of a feedback workflow just allows you the ability to request feedback at really any point in time during the asset's life. Um, if you want to get feedback from legal, if you want to get feedback from compliance or from your subject matter expert, uh, just sort of commenting back and forth, that's one way of doing it. Then you have the concept of a publish approval. So this allows for decentralized publishing, which is also kind of interesting in the sense of user-generated content. So if you really want to encourage the use of, of many people to contribute content to the system, but you still want to maintain uh, control over what ends up kind of going live and being, being uh, available to your users to download and use, that's when a publish approval really makes sense. So this way you can allow your assets to be in a staging environment for approval, determine who's going to make those approvals um, before it actually goes live and then someone can download it into a course or into a marketing project or support material. And then there's the download approval. So if you, even if you've gone through that publish approval and you feel really good about what's on the site, you can still request a download approval. So this way people request assets for download, you can ask them, why are you using it? What are you planning to use it for? Um, and really get a good sense of, of what that use case is all about before you allow them to go ahead and download the asset and use it in their project. So approvals are really key, um, and these workflows are really key to making the process uh, you know, time-saving and, and really mirror how your organization is going to, to use these within, within a real-life environment. And then I just I just bring up modules because I just want to point out that you can change the naming conventions as well that make sense to your organization's terminology. So if you might not want to call it admin, you can call it whatever you want, or people, or reports, uh, dashboards, whatever that might be. So all of this is customizable as well. And then the last thing I want to bring up is this concept of branding or brand guidelines. Excuse me one second. So I think what's really uh, important about this is bringing it to life. So oftentimes you might see, you know, this is how you want your templates to look. This is how you want courses to look. Or, or marketing comes to you and says, these are our brand guidelines that you have to comply with. And using a digital asset management system allows you to really, really bring these brand guidelines to life. So things like being able to access directly from the system, things like uh, fonts and images and logos, being able to show things like incorrect logo use, or showing which colors are part of your color palette. All of that can actually be integrated directly within the system so that as you're working on courses, as you're working on any kind of creative content, uh, you have access to not only the assets you need, but also the, the guides, the palettes, uh, the use cases of all of that as well. So this really just helps to educate your internal and your external stakeholders. So that, in a, in a very short uh, period of time, is an overview of VAST, as well as how this works, again, kind of bringing this back full circle to how this works with like Tor Online and your course development. Um, so 